So the cause and effect, and this may be the first time you've heard some of the things that I'm about to explain to you. It may not be, but what I hope happens is that I explain it well enough so at least you get a, a basic feel for how things really happen. I'm going to use it with some graphics here, and hopefully my graphics work correctly, but one of the first things that we ever want to look at to understand where markets are going is something as simple as Fed rates, Fed interest rates. And the reason that we want to do this is historically you can, I'm going to pull up some charts, you're going to see it for yourself, but bottom line, they have a bigger impact on the market than almost anything else that you're going to look at, period, bar none. And there's a reason behind it. When rates are low, there's a, there's, there's a couple decisions that, that big money has to make. If you're an institution and you need to put your money to work, do you want to put your money into treasuries that are paying 1%? Or would you rather put your money into a market that, yeah, it has the potential of losing money, but on average, you know, we're talking 10, 15% a year that it's been making over the last decade. And are your odds better there than putting it in at 1% or 2%, but guaranteed that you won't lose your principal? Well, if you're an institution, you've got to report to your investors, you've got to report to your shareholders where that money is going, how that money is being made, and what kind of growth they can expect. Well, they're not going to be very happy at 1% or 2% when you could have taken a little bit more risk and gotten 10% on your money. Low rates are the biggest wind, trade wind, if you will, in the marketplace. They cause the waves of the market to, to keep rolling to shore and push everything else with it. And that is the first thing that we look at when we try to decide the direction of markets. Bear markets are not going to happen until those rates start to rise. In, 2000, in 2008, guess what, guess what was going on? Um, interest rates were rising, and it got to the threshold point twice before it finally tumbled. And we often call that, you know, um, three steps and a stumble. I'll, I'll talk more about that over time, but bottom line is, Low interest rates mean bull market. Rising interest rates are going to, to lead to bear markets. Well, the other thing that happens when interest rates are low is the opposite of what happened when they were high. We have unemployment that actually starts to fall when interest rates are coming down. Well, the reason for that becomes pretty clear. When interest rates are lower, companies are using that money to actually um, develop new products, to increase inventories, to do more marketing, etc., And they need more people to help them do that. Therefore, um, unemployment actually gets better. There's fewer people out of work as interest rates stay down, and that money has time to get into the economy. And we've been seeing that. Remember not too long ago that unemployment was near 10%. And now we're under 7%. And remember what the Fed said? The Fed said when it gets to 6.5%, that's when we're going to start looking at changing interest rates. Well, we're going to look at that sweet spot in a minute. But those are two major factors that contribute to the, to the bigger waves of the market movement in a bull market. Those are the two biggest things that we look for. Everything else starts to become secondary and tertiary to this. Well. A lot of people think that earnings are, are, are driving the markets. The truth of the matter is, if you, if you watched a, um, a ping pong ball underwater, they've done studies with this, and I remember even in high school or college seeing videos of this, how, how if, you, if you have a string of balls you know, going down to the seabed floor and you watch the waves go up, um, across, that the balls go in a circular motion underneath the waves. They're affected by the waves, but they aren't producing the waves. Well, by the same token, a lot of people believe that earnings are driving the market. Earnings are actually an effect of the market, not affecting the market. And while they may have some ripple effects, while they may cause some small movement, you know, on a day basis or on a, on a short-term basis, they may cause some excitement. They don't create the major moves in the market. They are an effect of the market. And then finally, we have guys like you and me riding, riding the waves, trying to, to make sense out of all this 
and the sentiment indicators, how we are trading, whether we're buying, whether we're selling, whether we're taking profits, whether we're getting nervous because it's climbed, the, 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 the bull market is climbing the wall of worry. That too is, is an effect of what the market is doing, not an affect to the market. And so it's the two things on the left over here, lower rates, falling on unemployment, meaning more employment going on, more money going into the marketplace, more funds being distributed to go into the marketplace is, uh, is the driving force behind why markets ultimately rise. Well, by the same token, what happens when the weather turns bad? Well, what is bad weather in the market? Well, for the Fed, who are going to make the decisions about where they're going to move rates, it's going to be a, a thing called inflation, and it's going to be a thing called unemployment. Those are the two factors they have to weigh out, and I'm, I'm going to show you some interesting graphs about that. But when the storm of inflation starts to hit, meaning that the, the rise of inflation is going beyond the bounds that they have set toward um, a stable economy, they're going to do something different they're going to start raising rates to slow the economy down. That circle is going to be running backwards. The waves are going to be going the other way, and we're going to see unemployment actually start to rise at some point. It won't happen initially. There is always, there is always a, um, um, a little bit of a delay, and that's the part that the Fed always has trouble with. They can never quite figure out what that delay is, before they've made rates rise too fast or too hard, and when they've brought them down too, too fast and, uh, and too far. Well, we have earnings in this case that are going to be oscillating at a lower level, and we have sentiment that does nothing but go down to the seabed floor in the, in the marketplace. And so bottom line is, once we start to see inflation and once we start to see rising unemployment, there's a pretty good idea that the Fed is going to have to do what they have to do, and they are the biggest portion of the market change that we're going to see, and that's going to be raising rates. 